Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, uh, I welcome you to the lecture number 21 of the course titled Psychology of Stress, Health and Wellbeing. So, today is uh, the third lecture of module 7 and overall it is lecture number 21. So, before we, uh, we will, today we will talk about uh, the concept of positive emotions. Uh, so, before we talk about uh, today's lecture. Uh, let me give you a brief recap of last lecture that is uh, lecture number 20. So, in the last lecture we have discussed uh, some socio demographic factors uh, such as income, age, gender and education, how they influence our, happy, hap, uh, our level of happiness, our experience of happiness and happiness or subjective well-being. So, basically these are objective uh, realities of our life, various socio-demographic factors and how these objective realities influence our sense of happiness or subjective well-being. Uh, that was the objective of last lecture. So, uh, we have this, uh, so in the context of income and happiness, uh, we have discussed that the relationship between income and happiness is very complex and still not very clear. Uh, but most of the research shows that uh, the relationship or correlation between income and happiness is not very strong. Uh, it ranges from very small to moderate level of correlation coefficient. And uh, generally the idea is that uh, up to a certain point income plays important role. Beyond that, you know, uh, the influence or effect of or impact of income on happiness uh, decreases. So, that is basically uh, the relationship uh, can be explained using at a the decreasing or diminishing marginal rate. Uh, in the context of income and happiness, we have also discussed uh, a concept called as Easterlin paradox, uh, where you know, uh, one of the uh, economist whose name is Easterlin, who in 1974 wrote a seminal paper which stimulated a lot of interest in, uh, especially uh, for uh, interest in research in the connection between uh, income and happiness. And he basically found a paradox in the sense that uh, there was a substantial real per capita income increase in the last few decades in the western countries, but there was no corresponding rise in happiness level of the people uh, in those countries, uh, especially when he looked at time series data. In the cross sectional data, he found there is uh, no, some positive correlation, uh, may not be very strong correlation, uh, but still the relationship is positive, but in the time series data there was not much uh, increase in the uh, level of happiness in many can West western countries, uh, even though there was a uh, rise in per capita income. So, that is typically called as Easterlin paradox and we have also looked at some of the possible reasons such as social comparison and uh, adaptation theory. Then we, al we also discussed the relationship between age and happiness. Again, uh, the literature and the research evidences generally uh, shows that there is no consensus in the uh, direction of relationship between age and happiness. Some uh, showed there is no relationship, some research shows there is a positive relationship and some research shows there is a non-linear or U-shaped relationship uh, between age and happiness. So, a lot of uh, large scale studies across countries uh, showed that you know many evidences kind of shows there is an U shaped relationship between age and income. Uh, when we talk about U shaped relationship basically we are talking about which is <coughs> that the middle age uh, 
the average happiness level of middle age is kind of lowest so there is a dip in happiness level at the middle age maybe 40 to 55 years of age and then it slowly increases so in the young age it is little higher then it goes down in the middle age then it again rises up so that is the meaning of u-shaped relationship uh, we have discussed uh, this phenomena and we also discussed some possible reasons for it then we discussed the relationship between gender and happiness and uh, we uh, try to understand that many research shows that you know there is possible gender difference in terms of psychological disorders such as anxiety and depression where it was found that wom women are almost twice more vulnerable uh, for uh, various psychological disorder particularly anxiety and depression and men are more likely or more vulnerable for alcoholism and antisocial personality disorders uh, so in the context of psychological disorder uh, possible gender difference obviously there is no exact reason known uh, but uh, people try to explain it using pr probably biological hormonal reasons and also some people say it is uh, maybe a difference is happening primarily because women are more likely to express and seek support. Uh, the next and the last uh, factor that we have discussed is the relationship between education and uh, happiness and also again uh, the uh, literature shows there is no consensus in terms of direction of relationship between education and happiness. Um, studies showed all kinds of relationship positive linear positive non-linear uh, negative relationship etc so uh, possibly in that context we have discussed education may promote well-being or happiness uh, subjective well-being or happiness or may act as a detriment depending on many other factors uh, primarily you know uh, education may promote happiness primarily because it en enhances your skills and resources to achieve your goals but sometimes higher education also uh, you know uh, incre enhances or you know increases our aspiration levels to the extent that sometimes we, f we, f we may not able to fulfill those aspirations and reach those goals so in that sense it may uh, act as a detriment for uh, happiness and subjective well-being. So, uh, we have discussed basically there are uh, all these objective realities of our life has an influence on our sense of happiness or subjective well-being, uh, but the, uh, the, the relationship or impact is not very strong uh, and uh, this relationships and the impact of all these factors on human happiness uh, may be mediated by many other psychological factors uh, such as you know our aspiration levels, our goal settings, uh, the, uh, the way we compare ourselves with others uh, and so many other factors. So, uh, today we will talk about positive emotions uh, which is also an Im important concept connected to happiness level because it is one of the important ingredient of happiness that uh, how much you experience positive emotions. It is generally expressed and it is one of the core component of uh, our idea of happiness. So, in today's lecture, we will talk about uh, the concept of emotions, then we will talk about uh, positive versus negative emotions, then we will talk about 10 common positive emotions, and then we will also talk about values and functions of positive emotions. So, these are the some of the important topics that we will discuss today. Uh, Let us start. So, uh, what are emotions? When we talk about emotions, uh, so, generally by emotion we mean our feelings. So, one part, one aspect of our uh, reality or our psychological reality is that we think and another important aspect of our psychological reality is that we feel. So, that feeling aspect is our emotions. So, people define emotion in various ways. So, we will see a few definitions here first. Uh, one definition uh, says that an emotion is a complex uh, psychological state, it is basically an experience in our mind that involves three distinct components. So, every emotion has three important components. One is there is a subjective experience in our mind, so there is an experience. Second is there is a physiological response, every emotion has some physiological 
response. So, there is a change in our physiology and third every emotion has a behavioral or expressive response. So, these are three important components of every emotion. So, every emotion will have a mental experience, it will have a physiological impact and it will also have a behavioral and expressive response. So, every emotion is connected with some expression or some action that we do. For example, when we uh, feel angry, anger is an emotion. At the subjective level, there is a specific experience of that emotion. So, when we feel angry, uh, there is a sense of irritation, there is a sense of hotness, you know, uh, in our experience. So, there is a sp definite specific uh, mental experience is associated with certain emotions. So, anger will have certain uh, subjective experiences. Then there will be physiological response of anger. So, when we experience anger, uh, because it is very, very you know, energetic and uh, very you know, physiologically aroused state. So, whenever somebody experiences anger, there may be you know, increase in heart rate, uh, physiological arousal, you know, and uh, you know, so all kinds of uh, physiological response can be associated with the anger. And uh, uh, behavioral and expressive response, so with anger, we show certain behavior. So, an expression, you, know, you may uh, show certain you know, uh, behavioral tendencies such as you know, you may start you know, scolding somebody or beating somebody, some kind of behavior will be associated with it. So, every emotion has uh, these three important components. Uh, for some emotion, it is difficult to distinguish from others, but some emotions has a very clear cut all these you know, components. Uh, there is another definition of emotion which says emotion is any mental experience uh, with high intensity and hedonic content. So, hedonic content basically means pleasant or unpleasantness is there with connected with emotions. Some emotions are pleasant, some are unpleasant and there is an high intensity. So, emotion will always have some intensity to it. So, uh, many psychologists you know uh, have claimed that there are certain emotions which are more basic than others. So, there are so many emotions we experience you know. Emotion itself is a huge area of research and we all experience diverse emotion. As a human being, we can go through complex emotions. Uh, and uh, there may be some basic emotions which are very fundamental and there may be some more complex emotions uh, which may include you know, combination of many other emotions. One of the particular uh, research his name is Paul Ekman. Uh, he is one of the you know, uh, pioneer in research in the area of emotions. Uh, he reported that we all human beings experience six basic emotions. Of when he says some basic emotion basically uh, by basic emotion we mean it is kind of biologically and psychologically very basic and fundamental and they are universal. So, that is the meaning of uh, basic emotion. Uh, so, there are six basic emotions according to him the, these are you know uh, fear, disgust, anger, surprise, joy and sadness. Uh, later he expanded uh, uh, this list and included many other emotions such as embarrassment, excitement, contempt, shame, pride, satisfaction and amusement. So, basically six basic emotions are, so basic emotions are so So, these are six basic emotions. So, one is joy. So, joy is kind of you know emotion where we experience you know certain kind of delightfulness, uh, sense of you know uh, contentment, gratification, satisfaction. These are the 
things associated or you know, feelings associated with uh, the basic emotion of joy. Sadness uh, is uh, somehow, uh, you know, it is more in the negative side in the sense that, you know, it is characterized by, you know, uh, disappointment, grief, hopelessness. These are some of the uh, feelings associated with uh, sadness. Fear is something basically happens in response to a danger or a threat. Whenever we experience or encounter some danger or some threat, uh, the natural emotional response is fear and it is helpful in terms of it is it has a survival value. It is the fear that help us to and kind of indicates that there is some something is dangerous in our environment and uh, we should take protection or either by running away or doing or taking appropriate uh, whatever you know solutions that is needed. Uh, so fear may be associated with you know running away, hiding, freezing sometimes. Sometimes people freeze when they you know, experience high intense uh, fear. Uh, disgust uh, is about sense of aversion or revulsion, kind of you know repulsion that you experience in response to some unpleasant taste, sight or smell. You know? So, there is a kind of disgust you do not simply you know uh, you experience certain dislike or aversion towards anything that you see, feel or kind of smell or taste. If it is very unpleasant, we experience sense of disgust. Anger is something again uh, arises whenever you know there is a block in reaching our goal. So, we want to reach somewhere and there is a obstacle in reaching that goal. So, we experience generally anger or when we see that you know when, when we feel that we are treated unfairly or so there is a some kind of you know somebody is treating unfairly in your context or maybe you see it is happening somewhere else. So we may experience anger. So, you may become very argumentative, bitter, venge, you know, vengeful uh, when we experience this emotion of anger. So, anger can be sometimes dangerous in the sense people may become very uh, you know, uh, provocative and you know, may lead to aggression and many other you know, disruptive behaviors. And the last one is surprise. Surprise arises when we uh, experience experience or encounter uh, something, some sudden or unexpected things in our environment, sudden or unexpected things, now we become surprised. Uh, so, it is a brief startle response happens maybe you know when we hear some unexpected sounds or movement in our environment. Uh, so, it is more like a startle response and it is generally for a brief period of time it happens. So, according to Paul Ickman, so these are uh, six basic uh, emotions that we all experience universally across cultures and they are very fundamental. We may experience very complex emotions by combining all these emotions may combine in and we can experience so many other kinds of emotions also. Uh, so, he also um, basically is a letter added many other emotions, but they are, may not be so clear cut like these six basic emotions. You no, know, these are like you know embarrassment, excitement, contempt, shame, pride, satisfaction, etcetera. So, emotions can broadly be divided, uh, you know, there may be many other classification system, but one of the ways by which we can divide emotions or classify emotions are, you know, positive versus negative emotions. So, it is one of the popular way of classifying emotion. So, Negative emotions are basically, you know, uh, unpleasant feelings. So, any emotions which uh, gives you a sense of unpleasantness uh, or sense of pain or sense of which you do not like or there is creates a sense of avoidance. So, these are called as negative emotions. Any negative emotions, it could be, you know, sadness, it could be uh, disgust, it could be, you know, anger. So, there is an unpleasantness about it. So, that is in that sense, these are called as negative emotions. So, they can be defined as an unpleasant or unhappy emotion, which is evoked in individual to express a negative effect towards an event or person. And correspondingly, we may show certain behavior towards the event or the person uh, in, an, in a negative way. So, examples are like fear, anger, disgust, etcetera. 
So, these are mostly you know negative emotions. Uh, positive emotions uh, on the other hand uh, are typically pleasant feelings. So, when we experience positive emotions, we generally experience some kind of pleasantness within us. So, they evoke pleasantness and you feel good about it. Uh, so, they can be defined as mental experiences that are intense and pleasurable. So, certain pleasantness is there associated with positive emotions. So, uh, Fredrickson uh, is Barbara Fredrickson is one of the prominent researcher in the area of positive emotions. She uh, said, you know, we ex there are she kind of uh, no, uh, classified 10 common positive emotions that we experience uh, frequently. So, let us see what are these 10 common positive emotions. So, common positive emotions may include, you know, So, these are uh, 10 common positive emotions, uh, these are joy, gratitude, serenity, interest, hope, pride, amusement, inspiration, awe and love. So, let us briefly see what are these uh, positive emotions. So, joy as we have already discussed is a kind of delightful experience. Uh, which may include feelings such as you know satisfaction, gratification, etc. So, uh, this is one of the common positive emotion that we experience. Next is gratitude. Uh, gratitude is seen in many contexts just more than emotions, it is not just emotions, but it can be also considered as an important. Uh, positive emotions. So, be gratitude basically means uh, the feeling of thankfulness for something or someone in your life. So, when you feel grateful towards someone that you know whoever contributed something positively to your life um, or for something that you got in your life, you just express thankfulness you know we sometimes thank God that this has happened in my life or thank God you thank someone. So, that sense of thankfulness is gratitude. Next one is serenity. Serenity is experience of peacefulness and tranquility. So, basically whenever you feel you know very peaceful and calm uh, that uh, that is called as sense of serenity. It is very similar to uh, joy, but it is much more quieter uh, in the sense it is you do not have much intense uh, feelings associated with it. It is more peaceful and calm. The next one is interest. Interest is about whenever you are in a state of intrigue, you are very curious and engaged with something, you know, that is a sense of interest. So, many of these emotions, you know, you, we may not many times consider it as an emotion, but you know, they are all associated with positive emotions. So, according to Fred Dixon, these are also can be categorized as an emotions. So, interest, you know, uh, is a kind of when you feel very curious and engaged with something uh, that you encounter, uh, that sense is called as interest. Hope is another um, kind of, according to Fred Dixon, is an emotion, but many 
also consider it is more like of a cognitive thing where you know you become optimistic about your future uh, so it is a belief and feeling uh, that will turn things in a best so you will feel that you know things will become better in future or turn out to be good uh, that feeling of possibilities and optimism is sense of hope so this is also associated with positive emotions there may be a cognitive component to it next one is pride uh, pride is a feeling of accomplishment or achievement or mastery about something so you know uh, in many cultures pride is considered considered as negative not positive you know especially uh, the eastern probably you know some cultures collectivist culture pride may be seen in the negative as as a negative kind of uh, aspect in many western countries it is considered as a positive thing so basically you become hope uh, you become you know uh, feel good about your achievement your accomplishment of your life so in that sense it is called as a pride you know uh, but it, it may have some cultural connotation where some culture may not consider it as a positive in that sense uh, then comes amusement amusement is basically uh, you know it happens in the context of social situation where you are in a group or with other people so it is an experience of fun humor and playfulness with others so it is not an you cannot experience amusement on your own it is generally happens when people are around you and you play has a humor you have a sense of fun with other people so that is called as amusement uh, then comes inspiration uh, it is about feeling of upliftment when we see goodness and extraordinary things in our life so inspiration is connected to motivation you know whenever you get inspired you are motivated to do something you see something and it kinds of attracts you and you get uplifted and you want to you know achieve the, some certain thing in your life by getting motivation from something so that is inspiration so it's a sense of upliftment that happens by seeing something or some extraordinary you know work or feat or something in the whatever in, in your environment so it 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 makes you strive for great things so it it is connected to motivation then comes war awfulness you know generally we use the term you know it is an awesome experience so that is the meaning of awe basically means you feel a sense of wonder amazement and reverence uh, by seeing or you know experiencing something awe is experienced when we uh, see something vast and great that we feel small and humbled so generally the sense of feeling of awe happens when we see something greater such that we feel small and humbled by it so you go somewhere and you see some hill or some natural phenomena it is so vast and oceanic uh, that you uh, feel a sense of wonder uh, you feel humbled that you know such big phenomena things or things are happening in the world and universe that you feel small and humbled by it so that is the meaning of wo or a sense of wonder as amazement and the last one is love love is very complex generally and uh, according to fred dickson it's it is a combination of, it has all the elements of other positive emotions so it's a very complex feeling and generally it includes feelings of warmth trust and sharing it helps us to connect with others strongly and affectionately so it's love is a sense of I mean, it is considered here as an emotion, but obviously, it may have many other things to it. So, it is a very complex, and it may include all the positive emotions that we have discussed. It may include, you know, sense of awe, sense of inspiration, you know, sense of amusement, sense of joy, etc. And it helps us to kind uh, connect with other people strongly and affectionately. So, it's a complex emotion, and may include many other emotions. so let us see some of the characteristics of positive emotions uh, one thing is that positive emotions are less studied emotions so uh, compared to negative emotions negative emotions receive lot of research attention if you see historically uh, the history of research in psychology uh, mostly uh, the focus was given on negative emotions such as fear anger etc received lot of attention 
Um, the primary reason was obviously, uh, you know, negative emotion always attracted attention primarily because, you know, it leads to many problematic behaviors and it is important for survival needs. So, most of the psychological uh, disorders and problems are associated with some negative emotions. So, it needed immediate attention because we, in order to treat people or help people, we need to understand those negative emotions. So, th that is why a uh, lot of research attention was given to uh, negative emotions, primarily because there was a need for it. Uh, second reason is uh, positive emotions are less number as compared to negative emotions. So, in terms of numbers, a lot of negative emotions are there, but positive emotions are less in number and less in understood. Even if you see this list of 10 positive emotions, many of them, many of these are kind of more cognitive aspect and people, you know, may not actually consider them as emotions. So, even if you see basic uh, emotions of Ikman, you know, most of them are connected to negative side of emotions. So, negative emotions are more in number in terms of the range of emotion that we experience and uh, positive emotions are less in number. So, that is why probably they are studied less. According to Fred Dixon, uh, there seems to be only one positive emotion for every three to four negative emotions. So, this is a kind of general you know, indication that you know against three to four negative emotions, there may be one positive emotions in terms of uh, you know, available experiences that we have. So, positive emotions are also less distinct from one another. So, it is difficult to many times distinguish between two positive emotions. Uh, in terms of experience, they are very similar. So, uh, studying them becomes more problematic and difficult and, and they are difficult to define them. So, uh, one thing is they are less distinct and that is why they are difficult to define also. For example, it is difficult to differentiate between joy and amusement as compared to fear and anger. So, fear and anger are very specifically we can distinguish them in terms of experience, in terms of physiological correlates, in terms of behavioral tendencies, but such distinct differences are not there in positive emotions. So, this is also another reason why they are probably less studied. However, with the recent rise of positive uh, psychology, exploration into happiness, well-being and positive emotions, you know, uh, there, you know, uh, there have been, you know, rise in research in those areas. So, slowly, slowly we are understanding more and more about them. And let us see what are the functions and values of positive emotions. So, uh, Barbara Fredrickson, so she uh, gave a theory called as broaden and build theory of positive emotions. So, this is a theory that kinds of talks about various functions and values of positive emotions. So, we do not have uh, many theories on positive emotions because it, you know, these emotions were studied less, uh, whereas we have more complex theories and understanding about negative emotions and emotions in general, but for positive emotion we do not have uh, many theories to understand them. This is one theory which talks about you know various functions and values of positive emotion which is called as broaden and build theory. So, she pro proposed many significant functions and values of positive emotion. Some of the functions and values that she described in that theory, uh, we will discuss now. One is positive emotions um, broaden our thought action repertoires. So, positive emotion of what one function that it does is that you know, uh, it broadens our thoughts and actions it kinds of ex helps us to expand. Uh, so, whenever we experience positive emotions such as you know joy or sense of you know uh, sense of happiness or any other positive emotions, uh, we kind of feel expanded you know we want in our thoughts also kinds of expands, we become more broader in terms of our perspective and looking at things and world. So, the broadens uh, our thoughts and actions also the range of action that we can we do under positive emotion. On the other hand, uh, under negative emotion generally, uh, negative emotion narrows down our thoughts and actions. So, whenever we experience negative emotions such as anger or disgust or fear, we become very narrow and constricted 
and our focus only becomes comes to that problem which is causing it so we become very uh, you know narrow mind narrow in our our approach becomes very narrow so it narrows down our thoughts and actions so this is a kind of con sharp difference between positive emotion and negative emotions uh, so negative emotion narrows our attention thoughts and options uh, positive emotion broadens them so this is one of the function that it does so it makes us uh, more creative more, uh, it helps us to see more opportunities and it makes us more flexible and open minded so positive emotion does all these functions which are very conducive and helpful to solve problems to deal with the problems of life to look to become more creative in our approach uh, so because of this aspect uh, positive emotions kind of promotes many other uh, associated functions which are adaptive so under negative emotions we become uh, very constricted and we are not able to look at solutions of problems generally because we become too focused and we don't see beyond that problem uh, options which are beyond that so we become very focused and narrow minded uh, which hinders solutions of problems and adaptation to a situation the next function uh, that fredrickson talks about is positive emotions undo negative emotions so what is the meaning of undoing negative emotion means if you might have experienced negative emotions certain impact is there so it will have a physiological impact in your body in your mind certain uh, negative emotions but if you experience positive emotion after death it will undo the, all this negative impact of it from the body as well as from the mind so positive emotion help us to recover from the harmful effects of negative emotions so negative emotions has so many harmful effects we have already discussed in uh, many like in uh, our initial lectures stress and negative emotion how it can have a harmful effects in our both in our mind and body so we generally do not experience both positive and negative emotions simultaneously generally we cannot experience both at the same time so whenever we experience uh, positive emotion we cannot experience negative emotion simultaneously so experiencing positive emotion uh, may undo its effect uh, undo the effects of negative emotions therefore inducing positive emotions uh, when we are experiencing negative emotion such as you uh, know uh, anxiety stress which are actually associated with negative emotions can diminish the intensity and duration of such negative emotions so this is uh, generally we also understand in our you know day to day life functioning also that when some people are in a very stressed and negative emotion experiencing negative emotions people who understand they will go and uh, crack some jokes or you know tell something brighter side of life you know so the idea is they try to they are trying to stimulate positive emotions so if they stimulate positive emotions in that person it will undo the negative impact of negative emotions so it will slowly people that person will be able to come out of it so this helps us to undo the negative emotions so this is another function uh, the uh, third function is positive emotion enhance resilience we have already talked about this part uh, when we discussed the concept of resilience uh, that for enhancing resilience resilience is basically our ability to bounce back from some adversities and crises of life so uh, this uh, generally when some adverse event happens or crisis happens you know we generally experience lot of negative emotions and that actually hinders us to come out of it in many situations so sometimes uh, stimulating or you know facilitating positive emotion in those context um, will help us to broaden our thoughts and options uh, we'll be able to find more solutions to come out of it so in that sense you know it will kind of facilitate problem solving and adaptive coping uh, in the context of adversities and life crises or stressful situations so it enhances our sense of resilience the another function of positive emotion is that it builds many resources uh, particularly psychological resources resources means certain uh, abilities or skills that helps us to uh, or empower us in certain ways so those are called as resources 
So, positive emotions uh, helps in building uh, various kinds of resources including physical resources, intellectual resources, social and psychological resources. So, it promotes building of so many resources and help us to adapt to various life circumstances. For example, uh, positive emotions build intellectual resources through enhanced learning and performance. So, under positive emotions we are more likely to um, learn more in the context of intellectual learning and we are able to perform better as compared to when we are under negative emotions. So, when you are happy and joyful uh, you learn more intellectually it could be learning about some you know whatever topics about some you know classroom exercises whatever it is. If you are joyful and happy generally you are more likely to learn more because your thoughts are more open and creative and more flexible. Uh, so, it promotes learning and also it helps us to perform better in terms of actions. So, it builds intellectual resources in that sense. Uh, so, positive emotions also uh, can build in certain context physical uh, abilities or resources. So, for example, you know whenever we feel good we generally engage in sports and plays all this also helps us to build physical resources. Uh, positive emotions are also key in building and maintaining social relationship and facilitate social resources. So, positive emotions are also connected to social resources, building social resources in terms of building connection with people. So, generally when we are feeling good we want to connect with people, share it, express it and also other people also feel good in terms of connecting with us when we are joyful and happy. Uh, people generally do not like to be associated with somebody who is constantly depressed. So, when you are happy other people also likely to be associated with you, you yourself will be likely to connect with other people. So, in that sense it also uh, promotes or facilitate uh, building social resources. Another important uh, function or aspect of positive emotion that it can trigger an upward developmental spiral. So, it spiral it an upward spiral kinds of it can stimulate. So, generally negative emotion uh, stimulates downward spiral such as uh, under depressed mood or when we become very sad, uh, it can stimulate downward sp spiral of negative thoughts and emotion and can lead us to vicious cycle of negativity. So, let us say when somebody is very depressed or you know, very sad, uh, so what happens he will uh, it will stimulate negative thoughts, more and more negative thoughts will stimulate more and more negative emotions, negative emotion will further stimulate negative thoughts. So, it kind of facilitate thoughts, negative thoughts and emotion one you know. Uh, in a kind of spiral. So, you tend to go down and down more and more and many times you find it difficult to come out of it because it becomes a spiral. One facilitate others, negative emotion facilitate negative thoughts, thoughts again facilitate negative emotions which again facilitates negative thoughts. So, kind of one gets caught up into a vicious cycle. Similarly, positive emotion can stimulate upward spiral in the sense that when you feel experience positive emotion it will facilitate positive thought processes which will again further facilitate positive emotions and it will again go to positive thought. So, kind of a upward spiral will come uh, which will uh, promote in our emotional well being or overall well being and sense of resilience. Uh, positive emotions also may protect health primarily because by, by undoing the effect of negative emotions. Uh, we have already discussed in uh, many lectures that you know in, in the initial few lectures that negative emotions associated with stress and other negative emotions can lead to many physical and psychological disorders, both physical and psychological disorders uh, by you know st uh, uh, stimulating uh, release of stress hormones and other things. So, positive emotions can undo all this negative effect therefore, it can promote health both physical as well as mental health. So, positive emotions can undo the harmful effects of negative emotions including physiological effects. So, it is possible that positive emotion may protect our physical health as well. Uh, there are evidences to it also. There is something also called as a positivity ratio. 
uh, Fredrickson and Losada in 2005 they did a research where they found that uh, psychological well-being or happiness uh, is uh, kind of requires a ratio of positive emotion to negative emotion as 2.9 is to 1 or kind of approximately we can say 3 is to 1. So, against one negative emotions if you experience three positive emotions if that is the ratio of your experience then so if people who are reported three or more instances of positive emotions for every one instance of negative emotions are more likely to stimulate upward spiral of positivity and lead to experience of flourish and resiliency so it is for well being and flourish to have flourishing life to happen or sense of resilience to happen generally the research indicates that you know against one negative emotions if people experience three positive emotions as a general ratio three or more and then it will stimulate an upward spiral of positivity which will promote you know resilience as well as well being so various happiness intervention strategies we will discuss in some upcoming lectures will be basically about enhancing some of this positivity ratio also so we'll talk more details about that uh, later on uh, building positive emotions this part we have already discussed when we talked about the uh, seligman's model of parma p e r m a parma where one aspect was positive emotions or as an important in ingredient for well being and resilience so there we have discussed you know how can we build positive emotions more and more in our life uh, we have already discussed about so just briefly I will just touch again because it is specifically talking about positive emotions. So one thing is by practicing gratitude. Uh, so gratitude itself is also considered many times as positive emotions. But by practicing gratitude basically means by expressing thankfulness towards others or in general about your life uh, can immediately stimulate positive emotions. Uh, because we have already discussed you know whenever you complain about lives more and more it complaining stimulates negative emotions but thankfulness a uh, sense of thankfulness always stimulates positive emotions and we may find many things in our life for which we, sh we should be thankful generally we don't look at that di direction so that being grateful always enhances positive emotions uh, doing activities that you enjoy is one of the best ways. So, many activities people enjoy and by doing that we can enhance positive emotions. Uh, spending uh, time with loved ones is one important uh, ways of increasing positive emotions. Playing with children, pets and friends. Basically, again it is a kind of connected to loved ones. Uh, spending more time with them enhances our frequency of positive emotions doing exercise particularly aerobic exercise uh, we have already talked about it in one full lecture where we discussed that you know aerobic exercises stimulate certain hormones such as endorphins which improves our mood and enhances positive emotions listening music also is obviously a very simple and effective ways of stimulating positive emotions uh, now in the end let us talk about you know uh, negative emotion as such we should not curse negative emotions so because we have talked so much good about positive emotions so we should not understand that negative emotions are bad in the sense they should be cursed and removed from our life they are not always bad in the in the, in the uh, bad or negative in that sense so negative emotions are kind of important part of our life and you cannot avoid them and because and they are also adaptive in that sense you know certain negative emotions are necessary for our survival for example fear sometimes you know uh, without fear we will not be able to survive so fear s gives an indication that you need to take care of yourself uh, you know because there is a danger in an environment so negative emotions should not be looked like you know they should be cursed or something they are also very important part of our life even in uh, positivity ratio you know negative emotion is present in that ratio 3 to 1. So, at least one positive negative emotion has to be there or should be there or it is there. The problem why we are talking about increasing positive emotion is that we are experiencing uh, too much negative emotions uh, which is causing many uh, you know uh, decreasing our sense of well being and happiness. So, in that context we need to increase uh, our experience of positive emotions. 
So, excess of anything is bad. Uh, so, negative emotion is also very bad if you experience too much of negative emotions. And our lifestyle and the environment is becoming such complex that you know it's stimulating more and more negative emotions. So, in that context, we need an intervention for positive emotions. Excess of anything is bad, including positive emotions. You know, in certain disorders such as mania, which is also a phase in the bipolar disorder where you know, people alternatively go through depression and mania. So, in depression, they will become utterly depressed and disconnected. And in the phase of mania, they will become extremely uh, euphoric, uh, you know, very, you know, very talkative. They, there will be, you know, uh, they will be highly in a good mood. There will be a lot of energy and activation and too many of activities they will do. There will be you know, racing thoughts in their mind. So, all these are characteristics of manic episode, you know. So, those are not helpful because this is in excess and without really any context people are experiencing such emotions. So, that can be also maladaptive in that context. Bonnywell in 2012 you know she proposed that you know there may be many other positive aspects to negative emotions also in that sense. Sometimes negative emotion can instigate personality change. We have discussed in post traumatic growth the traumatic experience can actually stimulate uh, certain positive changes within us. So, in that context, they may also stimulate positive changes. Uh, uh, some negative emotions, you know, can uh, promote self-reflection and help us to keep in touch with our deeper selves. So, more self-reflection, personality changes, all this can be associated with negative emotions sometimes. Uh, sufferings may make us more wise and facilitate learning and understanding. So, that is also again connected to post traumatic growth. So, it can uh, make us more wiser. Coping with negative emotion may cause positive social consequences such as care, empathy, morality and modesty. Sometimes these things gets developed when certain negative uh, in the context of negative emotions collectively we experience. So, these emotions may actually which are positive in that sense, you know, care, empathy, all this can be facilitated by that. So, it is not looking at negative emotion as bad or evil or something. It is more like, you know, we need to stimulate more and more positive emotions within us uh, to increase our sense of well-being. A negative emotion will be, any, anyway, it is a part of our life. We cannot avoid it. But we need to experience more and more positive emotions because the life circumstances are like that, you know, negative emotions are stimulated more and more in our life. So, we need to increase the frequency of positive emotions and having said that we are not saying that you no know, negative emotions are bad or should be cursed. They have their own you know, purposes and functions, especially many evolutionary functions uh, that they serve. So, with these few things, uh, I will conclude today's lecture. Thank you.